Many new Christians have to go through a process of cleansing once they have given their lives to Jesus. Sin opens our spirit and soul to demons that sit in our gates and block the flow of God's power in us. To deal with demons, we can repent of our sins before God and receive deliverance to get those demons out. Jesus said, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Unfortunately, a lot of young Christian believers fall into a destructive cycle where their demons get cast out and then they enjoy a period of freedom until the demons come back and stop the flow of glory again. Many new believers ask, why can I not maintain the freedom that I've received in Jesus? Hi, my name is Joseph. Welcome to Unity with Heaven, where I help you to connect with God's plan for your life so that you can fulfill your destiny. Today we're talking about the gateways of the spirit, soul and body. And our goal is to see the glory of God flow into us and then out of us into the world. Please watch to the end of this video because I want to give you some tips at the end about how you can keep your gates open at all times. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What is this door or gate that Jesus is talking about? I want to share some keys that can help you to maintain lasting freedom and fully express the kingdom of heaven in every aspect of life. The concept of the gateways in our spirit, our soul and our body is fundamental in how we interact with the presence of God that's right inside of us. For those who do not know Christ, the human spirit remains in darkness. However, when Christ enters our lives, He renews our spirit, filling it with light. Our renewal starts on the inside and then it flows from the inside to the outside. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That means the glory of God is really supposed to flow from heaven through us into this earth. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, For indeed the kingdom of God is within you. When we accept Christ, God's presence dwells within our spirit. The Bible describes our being as compromising three parts, spirit, soul and body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved. The life of God is designed to flow from the inside out, from our spirit to our soul to our body and then into the environment around us. Each part of us, our spirit, our soul and our body have gateways in them that can either allow the glory of God to flow through us or block that glory. For example, the gate between God's presence in us and our spirit is the gateway of first love. If we desire to experience God's life within us, then the gateway of first love is the first gate that needs to open. The gateways of the spirit include revelation, intuition, prayer, reverence, faith, hope, worship and the fear of the Lord. Through these gates, we interact and receive from the kingdom of God that's within us. And of course, the kingdom of God in us is also connected to the kingdom of heaven. Similarly, the soul has its own gateways. Conscience, reason, imagination, mind, emotions, choice and will. The glory of God flows from our spirit through our soul. The body too has gateways. Touch, taste smell, sight and hearing. The body gateways is where we receive external influences that comes in, but God's original design was for His glory to flow through our spirit, soul and body to the outside. Think about the apostles in the book of Acts in the New Testament. Signs and wonders and power flowed through their hands. Even when Peter walked, people that just came into the shadow of his body were healed. The glory was flowing from the inside to the outside, impacting everything around them. By opening the gates to God's presence and closing them to harmful influences, we can experience the fullness of life that God intends for us. 
Becoming True Expressions of His Kingdom on Earth. Before we talk about the gateway of first love, I want to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to Unity with Heaven yet, please hit that subscribe button. You can also uh, click the like, write me a little comment. Uh, in the description is a place where you can sign up to our newsletter. And remember, we do prophetic ministry every Monday night and every Friday night. Now let's start with the gateway of first love. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 we read, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have forsaken your first love. To open up your spirit for God's life to flow through you, Jesus has to be your first love. The passage continues in Revelation chapter 2. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. The lampstand is our access to the glory of God. Many people ask, how can I have power to do signs and wonders and healings? The answer is simple. Jesus has to be your first love. The Lord even gives us a promise that those who overcome will be granted the right to eat from the tree of life, located in the paradise of God, a place of peace and glory dwelling at the center of our being. Right in the middle of you, in your spirit, is God and Jesus and He is the tree of life. That means the tree of life is inside of you. And when Jesus is your first love, you have access to the tree of life. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. God wants you to have access to the tree of life. Some may argue that the flaming sword God placed to guard the tree of life after the fall blocks our way. However, this sword symbolizes the fire of God's glory. If you allow God's glory and fire to penetrate your life, you can walk through that flaming sword unharmed and eat from the tree of life. Unfortunately, many Christians today find themselves feeding from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which only affects behavior from the outside in. The tree of life nourishes us from the inside out, as God originally designed it. Now let's talk about first love. What is first love? When you think about the time when you were a young child, it's that puppy love that children have. It's pure affection full of passion and most of us have experienced that at some point in our life. However, Satan often uses trauma and hurt to close the gateway of first love, preventing us from touching God in the depths of our being. To unlock this gateway of first love and resurrect that first love that you felt inside of you when you were younger, we have to break off the change that's holding it back and receive the healing and restoration that God wants to give us so that we can compassionately, passionately, with purity, with nothing holding us back, love God fully. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus is standing at the door of our heart and he is knocking and he is waiting for us to open up that door. Yet many of us have shut this door due to past experiences, chaining up the gateway of first love and preventing us from enjoying intimate fellowship with God. Sin and hurt can cause you to close your heart and not be in love with Jesus. It's important to repent of the sin that barricades your heart. Maybe you have to repent of a sin or you have to forgive someone else or forgive yourself so that you can remove those barricades. Imagine Jesus standing on the other side of your door knocking to come in. Through repentance and forgiving those who hurt you, you can remove the chains that blocks your heart. While Jesus is knocking, we have to find the handle to the door of our heart because we have a free will to choose to let him in or to close that door. And so as I reached out to find the handle, I couldn't initially see that handle because I was afraid of what will happen when I open the door. But the Bible says that those who seek will find 
and you can go to the Lord, He will restore you, He will forgive you, He will, he will put you in a position where you are ready to receive from Him. And so when I was ready, I reached out and that handle appeared and I opened that up. I made the decision with my free will and I opened up that door for Jesus to come in. And then the glory, His love, His fire just flushed into my heart. Opening the door of your heart to Jesus is like opening the door of a hot furnace. When you open up your heart to Jesus, you will be overwhelmed with His amazing love and His acceptance and His passion and his fire uh, and his glory and presence that comes into you once your gateway of first love is open you will experience a deep awakening and longing to encounter jesus everywhere like david your soul will long to be in the courts of god yearning for his presence this rekindled fire in you will create a hunger for intimacy with god your insight is like the most holy place in the middle of the tabernacle where God dwells. In, and from that place, the river of God will start to flow to the outside of you. Ezekiel saw this river, which begins as a trickle from the source, the dwelling place of God's presence. And this source is within your spirit. Now we're going to take a time and look at each one of the individual gates in your spirit. So the gateways of the Spirit serves as gates to allow the glory of God and the supply of God to flow into your very being. The gateways of the Spirit include revelation, intuition, prayer, reverence, faith, hope, worship, and the fear of the Lord. Through these gates flows Zoe. Zoe is the highest form of God's life. Most believers have only just two or three of these gates functioning, stunting their spiritual growth and power. If only a few of your gates are open, then you will really limit the flow of God's glory through you. God is calling each one of us to rise up as sons and daughters in His kingdom, and as part of our growth into maturity, we have to open all eight of the gates of our spirit. Imagine using only one muscle group in your body. It would eventually lead to imbalance. The same holds true for our spirit. To fully walk in God's authority, every one of your gateways has to be open and fully functioning. Let's explain each one of the eight gateways. The revelation gate is seeing in the spirit and receiving understanding and instruction from God. Your intuition gate will help you to discern what is going on around you in the realm of the spirit. So your intuition will help you to see an angel or to feel a certain anointing or to see the presence of God come into the place to do something. Or even if a demon comes there, you'll also discern it through your intuition. Most of us know the prayer gate where we commune with God and then the reverence gate where we surrender to Him. The faith gate, of course, is taking responsibility and implementing the vision that God gives us. The hope gate is a picture of the promises of God and the future that He has for us. The worship gate is expressing our love to God and the fear of the Lord. Gate is a conviction to always obey the Lord. Opening and activating your spirit gateways. So let's assume Jesus is your first love. Now you want to open up your spirit gateways. Your first step would be to bring a separation between your spirit and your soul. The problem is your soul wants to stay in charge and so you have to cut that power off the soul so that the soul comes underneath the rulership of your spirit. If your soul remains in charge, you will block the flow of God's river in your life, you will allow demons to sit in your gateways and you'll stop or diminish spiritual sight and revelation. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. The scripture is very clear that we can use the sword of the spirit to bring the vision between our spirit and our soul. To bring your soul under the dominion of your spirit, you can repent of allowing your flesh to control your life, praying specifically for the separation, actively yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit and often pray in tongues. Really what happened is you submit your spirit 
honor the Holy Spirit, and then your soul submits to your spirit. And now the, the glory of God can flow from the Holy Spirit through your spirit, through those gates, into your soul. Especially in the beginning, opening up your spiritual gateways is a daily exercise similar to exercising your muscles. Jesus stands at the door waiting for us to invite him in. This invitation is not a one-time occurrence, but a continual act of surrender. As you continue to work on your gates and especially praying in tongues to allow that flow of the Spirit through all of your gates, you'll find more of the power and the glory and the revelation just flowing through your life more freely. Now let's talk about the gateways of the soul. Of course, the gateways of the soul will determine how you interact with people around you. The gates of the soul are conscience, reason, imagination, mind, emotions, choice, and will. For our lives to reflect God's glory, our soul has to be in line with our spirit, who is of course underneath the submission of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go through each one of the soul gateways. The first one is your conscience. Your conscience is a filter that helps you to live a holy life. The reason gateway is where your logic acknowledges the power and the faithfulness of God to support your faith. The imagination gateway is the screen in your mind where you see both spiritual and natural things. Your imagination draws on memories to identify what it sees. Your mind gateway stores memories from the past. So your mind can bring up images that will block the flow of God or your mind can bring up anchors that help you to connect with the kingdom of God. Your emotions gateway works parallel with your mind, connecting feelings to the images and the events that store it in your mind. You can of course disconnect your emotions from your past and connect your emotions to what God is feeling. Now the choice and will gateways are closely interconnected. The choice gateway governs our decisions while the will gateway enforces them. To open up your soul gateways, I suggest you take each one of them separately and you pray through the following things through each one of those gates. 1. Bring your soul gateway under submission to your spirit. Number 2. Release the life and power of God to flow through that gateway. Number 3. Where that gate has closed because of sin, use the sword of the spirit to open that soul gateway. And number 4. Cast out any possible demons that may resist the flow in that gateway. To help you, I want to take a moment and just pray through your soul gateways. If you would, just pray with me. Father, we come into your presence. Jesus, you are our first love. And Lord, today we want to open up our soul gateways. And so Lord, we bring before you our conscience gateway to open it. We bring our conscience under submission to our spirit man. I release your life to flow through the gateways of reverence, worship, and the fear of God, building a conscience that reflects your righteousness. Where my conscience has been seared by sin, I use the sword of the Spirit to cleave this gateway open, allowing your flow to direct my actions. I bind any resistance and cast it out in Jesus' name, declaring Jesus as Lord over this gateway today. Lord, I bring my reason gateway under submission to your Spirit. I release your life and faith to flood my reason, removing any blockages that hinder the flow of your truth. Lord, I bring my imagination into submission underneath my spirit. Lord, I acknowledge the presence of images and sins in my mind. I own these images as my responsibility. I bring them into the light of Christ. I apply the blood of Jesus. Lord, I take the blood of Jesus and I wash the images in my mind clean. Lord, thank you that you cleanse me. Lord, I bring my mind under submission to my spirit. I submit my mind to the Holy Spirit and receive the word of God to renew my mind. I bring my emotions gateway 
in submission to the Spirit. Lord, purify the images and emotions stored in my mind so that I can reflect your nature. I apply the blood of Jesus to my emotions and bring my emotions in submission to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I bring my choice and will gateways in submission to the Spirit. Lord, I pray for the release of your life and the crucifixion of my own will. Lord, your will be done in my life. In the name of Jesus, Amen. All right, so I could feel the presence of God come in. Now what you can do is you can pray in tongues for a few minutes. You can even put some worship music on and just allow the glory of God to flow from your spirit, from God within, through your spirit, um, into your soul so that you can cleanse those gateways. If you need to, you can rewind this and just pray this prayer one or two times again with me. By continually submitting these soul gateways to the Holy Spirit's authority, we can experience greater freedom, spiritual growth, and alignment with God's purposes, enabling His glory to flow through every aspect of our lives. Our Body Gateways The five senses and gates of our body are touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. Our body gateways are given to us so that we can love others, we can work, and we can enjoy life. For unbelievers, these gateways often serve as the main conduits for receiving information, leading to a life driven by the natural carnal desires. Even for believers, the body gateways can be compromised by sinful desires, the works of the flesh. Just like you have to open up your gateway first love, cleanse your spirit gateways, cleanse, cleanse your soul gateways, you also need to cleanse and maintain your body gateways so that you can walk holy before God and His power can flow through you. So you have five body gateways or five senses and of course the first one is touch and so the function of the touch gateway is to make others around you feel loved and accepted and safe in your presence. The touch gateway is essential to show God's love, but trauma and abuse can close this gateway. The taste gateway is closely tied to cravings and can lead to addictions. The smell gateway often triggers memories and desires, influencing our emotions. The sight gateway is particularly susceptible to defilement through exposure to impure images, which can foster lust and other sinful thoughts. The hearing gateway can be damaged by verbal abuse, leading to rejection or fear that distort reality. To clean your body gateways is simple, prayer and fasting. And really the answer is, the more you walk according to the Spirit, the less you will give space for the flesh. Now as I promised, I want to give you a few tips that you can use to keep your gateways open at all times. Keeping your gateways open. The life of God flows from the glory of God in you through your spirit, soul, and body. To keep your gates open all the time, it's important to start at the source where God is on the inside of you and then work through your spirit and then your soul and then to your body to the outside. Keeping your spirit, soul, and body gateways open is vital for sustaining the flow of God's life through you. Keeping your gates open is not a one-time event. It's a continuous process of dedication and discipline. I want to give you four tips and my tip number one is keep short accounts with God. Regularly come into God's presence and repent of your sins and apply the blood of Jesus to each one of your gates. When your conscience alerts you to a misstep, address it immediately. This practice keeps your gateways clear and allows you to maintain spiritual freedom. My second tip is to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Often, conviction will prompt you to act, helping you to avoid the pitfalls of sin. If you feel condemned instead, it may indicate something has been overlooked. Regularly yielding to the Holy Spirit makes it easier to align with God's will. Tip number three, pray in tongues all the time. When you pray in tongues, you allow the glory and that river of God to flow through all of your gateways and in that way you keep them clean. This practice helps sustain the presence and the power of the kingdom of God within you, ensuring that your spirit, soul and body are unified in purpose and preventing division. Step number four, 
take authority over your gateways. Keep that authority and don't give up. Perseverance is key to keeping your gateways open. Like a well that pumps cloudy water before it runs clear, your spiritual life may require consistent effort to maintain purity. You've been given authority to exercise dominion over your gateways. Use this authority to cast out any negative influences and demons that try to go and sit in the gates of your life so that you can maintain and you can enforce the kingdom of God in the gateways of your life. By embracing these practices, you allow the kingdom of God to flow freely through every aspect of your being, transforming you from the inside out and enabling you to impact the world around you. With your gateways open and God's glory flowing through you, you will see wonders and miracles all around you. Please subscribe to our channel and sign up for our newsletter. If you would like to receive personal prophetic ministry, you can join our live stream on Mondays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, please click here.